Hi, I'm Marcy from BrainAndSpinalCord.org. Today I'll be bringing you some information on the levels of function in spinal cord injury. Be sure to check the website for all relevant links and recap of this article. If you or a loved one has sustained a spinal cord injury, you've most likely heard the doctor or medical team classify the injury with a letter or number, such as C4 or T2. What do those letters and numbers mean? These letters and numbers refer to the levels of function a spinal cord injury survivor has after the injury. Before I get into the specific levels of function, I'd like to go over how the human spinal cord works as well as the impact of spinal cord injuries. The human spinal cord acts as a conduit between the brain and the rest of the body, relaying messages. When the spinal cord is bruised, crushed, or torn, the messages sent between the brain and the body no longer flow through the damaged area of the spinal cord. What does this mean? It means that the functions of the body located above the point of injury will continue to operate normally, while the functions below the point of injury will suffer some degree of impairment, including motor deficit, sensory deficit, bowel and bladder dysfunction, and respiratory difficulties. The letters and numbers that doctors refer to after a spinal cord injury are used to identify where along the spinal cord the injury occurred. The higher the point of injury, the greater the impairment. C-level injuries occur in the cervical area of the spine. An injury that occurs in the C1 to C3 area results in limited movement of the head and neck only, with paralysis below that region. In many cases, the survivors of C1 to C3 injuries have difficulty talking and require the use of a ventilator to breathe. Survivors with C3 to C4 injuries have head and neck movement, as well as some limited shoulder movement. They're typically able to talk and can eventually adjust to breathing without a ventilator. Those with C5 level injuries generally have head, neck, and shoulder control and can bend the elbows and rotate their hands. At this level, self-care is manageable. Survivors with this level of injury can often push their own wheelchair and driving as frequently possible with adaptive equipment. A C6 level injury results in movement of the head, neck, shoulders, arms, and wrists, including the ability to bend the elbows, extend the wrist, and rotate the palms. The population who falls into this category is generally able to perform most self-care duties, can perform light housekeeping, and can manage a manual wheelchair. Those with C7 injuries have similar abilities as those with C6 injuries, but can manage more easily. Injuries that occur at the T level of the spinal cord occur in the thoracic region of the spine. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with a C8 to T1 level injury, in addition to the use of the head, neck, shoulders, arms, and hands, the fingers will also be able to be used. Survivors with injuries in this range are generally able to live independently. Survivors with T2 to T6 have normal function in the upper body, but have some degree of impairment in the legs. Some can walk with assistive devices, and those with T7 to T12 level injuries have similar function with slightly more control. L level injuries occur in the lumbar region of the spine, and survivors generally have some ability to move the hips and knees. With this type of injury, walking is often possible with assistive devices. This concludes our segment on the level of function in spinal cord injury. Remember to check our website for the most up-to-date information, including resources and tips regarding brain and spinal cord injuries. And thanks again for watching.